37 women have stood up publicly pointing their finger and said that Bill Cosby has either raped or sexually assaulted them. Many of the stories follow the exact same script. They allege Mr. Cosby gave them a drink, it incapacitated them, and then he had his way with them. Cosby, through his lawyers, denies all of the allegations, saying that any and all sex he had with these women was consensual. One of his lawyers is here today with me. Monique Presley represents Bill Cosby and joins me from Washington. Uh, Monique, nice to have you here. Uh, let me start with the deposition from the 2005 civil case against Mr. Cosby, which he settled privately. And I just want to read a paragraph from that deposition. Uh, it starts with the lawyer on the other side saying, when you got the quaaludes, was it in your mind that you were going to use these quaaludes for young women that you wanted to have sex with? Mr. Cosby says yes. That lawyer follows up, did you ever give any of those young women the quaaludes without their knowledge? Mr. Cosby, Cosby's lawyer objects to the question, restricted to the Jane Doe's. He says, would you please? The other lawyer says, no, I will not. And Mr. Cosby's lawyer says, do not answer it. So my question to you is, should he have answered that question? And I, I only ask that because isn't an attorney supposed to tell his client to not answer a question only if it will divulge privileged information or trade secrets or violate a court order? Well, it could be any of those things, or it could be because it violates some agreement that the parties have about questions that will be answered and will not be answered. And this was one of those instances where questions were only supposed to be about a particular subset of individuals. And, and I certainly can't go back and second guess the work that was done by ABLE counsel uh, in that deposition. But what's important there is that the questions that Mr. Cosby did answer and candidly, uh, more candidly than many I've seen in depositions in all the years I've been practicing, those answers were, one, that he never gave a woman a drug without her consent, and two, that he did not have non-consensual sex with any other person. So that's why it's important for me to go to whomever I can who will listen and say that Mr. Cosby, as of today, is innocent until proven guilty, and there mm. shall not be proof because the statute of limitations has passed. People waited far too long to want to discuss these matters at all. He's never been charged with a crime, never been convicted of a crime, and never admitted a crime. So where we stand right now is with people attempting to do through media and through public opinion what they cannot do and have failed to do in a court of law. I, I understand what you say that, that your client is saying, that Mr. Cosby is saying, but the fact is that 37 women say that Bill Cosby raped or sexually assaulted them, and some say that they were drugged. And I know he says that none of that happened, but is, are you saying or is your team saying that all of these women are, are lying? And I'm not calling anyone a liar. What I'm saying is that Mr. Cosby vehemently denies those allegations. And I actually re reject uh, the clumping. I know that it's probably more impressive when we say numbers like 35 or 37, but 37 women are not saying that they were raped. 37 women are not saying that they were sexually assaulted. There, as you said, are a variety of claims that are actually distinct, that are being clumped together. Together, I guess because it's easier than doing what to me should be yes. the hard work they, and they asking are the hard questions. They are yes. distinct, but none of them are, are very positive when it comes to Mr. Cosby. But let me ask you, have you ever seen a case where 37 separate accusers, even if they have different stories, um, many of them are close to identical, but where they were all making it up? I don't know who's who's making what up. I'm not really comparing it to any other cases. What I'm saying is that, yes, through the decades, we have seen what we used to call lynch mobs, where people turned and pointed the finger at one person and accused that one person of doing something that they did not do. And they were filed into the court one after another to say he did it, he did it, she did it, she did it, when it was not the case. That happened often in the 60s and 70s and this country and actually that's not what's happening now because we can't even go into a courtroom to get these matters resolved some say that the statute of limitations has expired and that's convenient for mr. Cosby I disagree I think it's convenient for accusers because then they're not required to do what would happen if they actually had to be brought well, into court and stand under the scrutiny of examination for the allegations that they're bringing will now. mr. Cosby will 
will Mr. Cosby ever come out publicly on his own without a lawyer like yourself uh, speaking for him and say anything about these allegations? I can't say what Mr. Cosby will or will not do at a point in the future, but what I know for sure is that in this country, you're innocent until proven guilty. It's not guilty until proven innocent. Mr. Cosby doesn't have anything to prove. He's speaking through his lawyers so that the record can be set straight, but he okay. has the right to say nothing at all. Monique Presley, thank you very much for your time.